We start with picking an integer n, a positive integer n, and defining phi of n to be the cardinality or the size of the set of positive integers x such that x is well, at least 1 but less than n and the greatest common divisor of x and n is 1. So x and n are co-prime. And this is Euler's phi function. And all it's doing is it's counting how many positive integers less than n, for a given positive integer n, are co-prime with n. So if I take the input n is 10, well, 1 is co-prime with 10, 2 isn't, because 2 divides 10, 3 is, 4 isn't, because both 4 and 10 are divisible by 2, 5 isn't, because 5 divides 10, 6 isn't, because both 6 and 10 are divisible by 2, 7 is, 8 isn't, again, because of divisibility by 2, and 9 is. So in this case, phi of 10 is the size of the set containing 1, 3, 7, and 9, which is four elements. And in fact, we can show that for any prime number, well, by definition, for any prime number, everything is co-prime with a prime number. So in fact, if I pick any prime p, then all of the elements, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever it is, up to and including p minus 1, are co-prime with it. So phi of p, where p is prime, is p minus 1. And we also have that if a and b are co-prime, then phi of a times phi of b is the same as phi of a times b. Now this function is named after a man who we will see again and again in this subject. He looks very disappointed in you, um, as he deserves to do based on how much mathematics he came up with, or maybe he's just annoyed that people often mispronounce his name as Euler, but that's Leonard Euler, one of the few men bright enough to pull off that terrible hat. Keeping Euler's condescending face on screen, we'll say that if a and n are co-prime positive integers, then a to the phi n is equivalent to 1 mod n. That is Euler's theorem. In fact, if I raise the integer a to the power of phi n, divide by n, I will always get remainder 1. And I prove that by first defining the set Zn star to be the set of all x's such that the greatest common divisor of x and n is 1. So clearly, absolutely by definition, the size of this set is phi of n. That's how we defined Euler's phi function. What I want to do is I want to show that if I take an element of the set, multiply it by a, and work out its remainder mod n, then it's also in the set. That doing this, multiplying by a and taking the remainder, can't add any more elements to the set. That in fact all it'll do is it'll just map to another element that's already in the set, z n star. If we now order the phi n elements of Zn star, well, they're all positive, so the smallest one of those, a1, is still greater than 0, a2 is the next largest, a3 the next largest, and the largest is a phi n. By definition, there's phi n elements in that set. And what we show is that if I multiply an element by a and then take its remainder mod n, that has to map to a unique value. 
Because if I assume it doesn't and say AI and AJ both map to the same value, then I can show that A multiplied by AI mod N, that's equivalent to A times AJ mod N. Then the difference between them has to be um, has to have remained a zero when divided by n. Now a and n are co-prime, so the only n which divides a i minus a j must be a i equals a j, being um, a i minus a j being zero. So in fact, they must be the same. A i must be a j. So that tells us the functions one to one. And because it's one to one mapping a set of phi and elements to a set of phi and elements, it has to be a bijection. To complete this proof, I just want to work out what a to the power of phi n times a1 times a2 times a3 dot 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 times a phi n is. So if I split a to the power of phi n and multiply each of the other terms by a, so a times a1 multiplied by a times a2 multiplied by dot 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 multiplied by a times a of phi n, then that is going to be the same as a1 times a2 dot 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 times a of phi n mod n because each of those times I multiplied by a, I just mapped to a different element of the same set with none of those two, with no two of those terms mapping to the same. So in other words, I will get the same as just multiplying a1, a2, a3 up to a phi n mod n. So in other words, multiplying by a to the phi n mod n is just um, like multiplying by the identity. So in other words, a to the phi n is equivalent to one mod n. If we take two co-prime numbers of n of 77 and a of 10, well, I have that phi of ab is phi of a, times phi of b. So phi of 77 is phi of 7 times phi of 11, and both 7 and 11 are prime. So I know that phi of 7 is 6, and phi of 11 is 10. So phi of 77 is 60. So what that does mean is that I would know that 10 to the power 60 is 1 mod 77. Now, if I asked you to work out 10 to the power of 60, well, you'd write 1 followed by 60 zeros. If I asked you to divide that by 77, or divide 77 into that repeatedly and work out the remainder, it's far from obvious what that is. But by using Euler's theorem, we can work that out in one line. And this idea of calculating mul multiplicative inverses in a modular arithmetic setting quickly is one of the main ideas behind modern cryptography. And in future sessions, we'll see how these ideas work in one of the main methods of cryptography, RSA cryptography.